What's up, Joe? What's up, everybody? Today on Sports 360, we're talking to Jeff Fry, former major leaguer and our certified hitting guru. Jeff will discuss his hitting videos that have taken social media by storm, much to the dismay of many new age hitting instructors across the nation. Jeff is on a mission to return the art of hitting to its basics, and he's doing it with a healthy dose of humor and wit. So settle in, because we have Jeff Fry up next on Sports 360. Joining me today on Sports 360 is former Major League player Jeff Fry. Jeff, what's up, man? How you doing today? I'm good, Jeff. How are you, buddy? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Uh, We're on lockdown, but everyone on this side is healthy and safe, so grateful for that. Um, But adjusting to, you know, the current situation, um, how, how are you and your family holding up? Uh, we're holding up um, pretty well right now. We, uh, you know, we're kind of homebodies to begin with, and um, you know, I, I think one of the things that, or there's a couple things that I believe are going to come out of this that are going to be beneficial. And one is I think that people are going to uh, hopefully appreciate um, the time they had with their family, the time that you normally don't get because everybody's going their separate directions, different directions, and life goes on so fast but we've had so much time to just hang out with the family and play cards and watch movies and you know I, i've been working out in the backyard with my sons listening to the rocky four soundtrack so mm-hmm. just little fun stuff that you don't normally think about that we've got to do that's uh you know i think i think it's going to benefit us in the long run Yeah, you know, and I've heard that from a number of people, and I believe that's right. Um, You know, I don't have any, my wife and I, we don't have any small kids at home anymore. You know, our our girls are grown and on their own. But, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we actually played Monopoly because our youngest daughter, Jasmine, loves Monopoly. And she wanted to play Monopoly. And we actually played Monopoly, my wife and I, our two daughters and our grandson via zoom <laughs> so, four hours right of of you know moving around the board buying property and all the rest of it um and we did it by zoom um and so you know you find ways if you even if you can't do it you know in person as you would just describe i think what what also has happened is people have found other ways to connect and have appreciated the connections so um Yeah, if there's anything that's good coming out of it, I think certainly that's something. And I hope it continues, right, that once we're out of this, that those types of good things and those connections grow stronger and continue as we go forward. Me too. Me too. It's, uh, you know, we have to you have to make the best of a bad situation. And, you know, my kids and I, we've been playing cards and watching movies and just doing things that, uh, you don't think about on a daily basis that you, you, you kind of missing out on because everybody's going in, in different directions. But, uh, you know, I've enjoyed it. I We've enjoyed it as much as we could by being kind of locked down at home. Right. Well, I appreciate you coming on today. This is actually, Jeff, your second time being on the show. Um, the first time around, we talked about your major league career and we also spoke about, um, your role as a broadcaster, you had just taken on a new role at that time. Uh, Today, though, Jeff, I want to talk to you about a series of videos that you have created and posted on social media that has caused a pretty good buzz. Um, And in the videos, you're taking on hitting experts or so-called hitting experts who are proponents of launch angle and other such things. Um, first of all, congratulations on the videos. They're well done. And to me, they're funny as heck and we're going to talk about them, but what prompted you to begin making these hitting videos in the first place? 
Well, it's, it was just kind of a joke, Jeff. You know, honestly, I was just, uh, I have three buddies of mine that we are on little group texts that we, um, you know, communicate on a daily basis. And two of the guys are currently scouts for major league baseball teams. And the, the third guy owns a hitting facility and, and is a former scout. And so, you know, we see these videos and things on some of the social media sites, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, whatever, YouTube. And uh, they just, they're things that we've never seen before. And some of the things that are being taught to kids, and we think it's, we don't agree with what's being taught. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, teaching kids to hit fly balls, kind of the opposite of the way we all learn to play. We're all former players. And um, so we just kind of joke around and send each other these videos. And one day I was walking around the backyard and messing around the garage. And I saw an old tee and I remember seeing this one video of this one kid doing this strange movement with a part of a tee. And so I thought I'd imitate it. I got my son, my 22 year old son to, to video me and you know the first take he goes no you did it wrong do, do it again so I did it again he goes that's it and I said oh the light bulb just went on because that's what a lot of these guys are saying once you get the the feel the light bulb comes on and now you've got you know the secret or this movement that they're trying to teach and um yeah I didn't think much of it I put it on Twitter and one of my buddies one of the scouts texts me and said hey 400 views. I was like, holy cow, I can't believe that. And then like an hour or two later, he goes, dude, you got 4,000 views. And I'm like, no, I don't. You, are you kidding me? And next thing I know, it's like over 10,000 views. And and I was like shocked. And it's like, I just did it for fun. And next thing I know, the backlash from the people that, some of the people that teach this stuff, I mean, it was crazy. It was personal attacks. It was, you know, calling out my kids names on social media and I was like what did I do here you know but it really got me fired up because I knew I struck a nerve and I know that what at least in my mind what is being taught is not the right way to teach kids to hit and so I thought what the heck let's make another video and the next video has like 80,000 views now and it's just I mean from there it's just continued and now I got people saying when's the next video when's the next video so uh I mean it's kind of taken on a life of its own to be honest and, and Jeff I mean this is more than you disagreeing with these so-called hitting experts because as you say in some of your videos you're a 15 year major leaguer who hit what 290 for your career mm-hmm Right. So, you know, a little bit, a little bit about hitting, I would think. So it's it's not just a matter of, you know, having an opinion. You know, you have a view that's based on success at the highest level. Um, so it, it's interesting because some of these so-called hitting gurus maybe not have played baseball at all or didn't really play at a high level. But how many of these videos, Jeff, have you made so far? I think there's nine so far. I think I've made nine so far. And, and it's funny, it's, I'm just sitting around constantly thinking, about, all right, what's my next one? And people are sending me things t to use. They're sending me videos. Hey, how about this one? How about this one? I mean, the, I can't even tell you, Jeff, how many people send me messages on a daily basis. And it's, when I first started this, I kind of just got back on Twitter because I wanted to promote my keynote speaking career. Um, I've always enjoyed uh, going out and talking to kids and parents about my experiences in the game and you know what it took for me to make it and overcoming adversity. So I, I really joined Twitter to promote that and Facebook to, to promote that. And I think when I first got on Twitter, <clears throat> I had like 600 and some followers or something like that. And that was about two months ago. And now I have over 4,500 followers on Twitter, over 4,000 friends on Facebook. And every day it's just more and more coaches, high school and college, reaching out to me and saying, please keep doing what you're doing. We've been fighting this battle for a long time. So many of our kids are getting ruined 
ruined by going to these so-called hitting gurus. And we're glad somebody like you who's had success at the highest level is speaking out. Yeah, and, and Jeff, as a longtime baseball fan myself, I, I feel the same way because I think that, you know, launch angle and some of these what I call new age techniques have not helped the game. And in fact, I believe they have hurt the game that that we've seen on on the field. Um, but so you've done about nine videos so far. Uh, do you have any favorites? Oh, well, the last one I did with the fishing net, when I first made it, I told my buddy, I was like, man, this is my favorite. This is, I think this is the best one. But the the machete one was pretty funny, too, when I sliced a banana. It's kind of a funny story. I, I got a text from Billy Ripken, who was my teammate, and, you know, he's on MLB Network, and he goes, Friday, is this you slicing this banana with a machete, you crazy? You know what? He goes, uh... Some guy just posted this story on MLB.com about you, some new age hitting techniques. He goes, is he in on the on the, the gag? I was like, no, I don't have no idea who this guy is. And he goes, well, he just posted on MLB.com app. He goes, and uh, I'm thinking about putting it on the big screen at Studio 21 of the MLB network. And next thing you know, the coronavirus hit. Mm. So I think it's still a possibility, but I know the cool thing, Jeff, is that I've been told by quite a few people that people are watching this. People are paying attention. And it's really to draw attention to the fact that kids are being taught the wrong way. Not that there is one way to do anything um, in baseball. Um, but I believe fundamentally the techniques that they're teaching kids are are going to hurt these kids in the long run. Yeah. I, and I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. You know, for me, you talked about the fishing net video that you made. You know, I I enjoyed that. And and I said this to you offline, Jeff. I mean, it's at the point now where when I see a new video of yours, I start laughing before I even play it because I know it's <laughs> going to have something in there that's going to be funny. But yet again, in the humor, it's a point. And, and, and that's the beauty of this, that you're making a point and you're illustrating it and you're doing it in a way that puts a smile on the face, makes us laugh. But at the same time, the point is not lost. Um, so, for example, I mean, the thing I get a kick out of, you know, is, OK, you let me see the thing that you've swung a PVC pipe, a fishing net, a boat or the uh the machete and banana drill which uh, that cracked me up about the launch angle and and how you slice that banana but the one jeff that really i said okay this guy is nuts okay was when you were hanging upside down and you swung the bat. <laughs> that one for me was i said okay this is really something that i knew at that point you were so vested in doing this because that, that, that was really funny. But Jeff, here's the thing for me. I've known you for a little while. I didn't know you had such a sense of humor where you've been hiding it all these years. <laughs> well, you know, uh, most of the times we've been around each other, we've been talking serious business about players and arbitration cases and things. So it's, you know, got to kind of keep it serious, but uh, I've always been the, the jokester. I mean, all the way up, from my college days and in the minor leagues, I was, you know, the guy that tried to keep guys loose and joking around. And I mean, even in the big leagues, um, especially with the Red Sox, I was the, the jokester on the team. And um, I mean, I believe that, you know, we, we're fortunate enough to play a kid's game um, as adults and, and get paid handsomely to do it. And it's so much stress that, you can't be a hundred percent stressed out all the time. You got to relax. You got to enjoy it. And it's just always been my, you know, the, the, my personality was to have fun. And some people take it wrong. It, uh, that's unfortunate. It's never meant to harm anybody, but I just like to have fun in life and enjoy life. And, you know, I like, I know in my videos, you know, hopefully that's what people are getting out of it because it's basically a spoof of 
you know, exaggerations of some of these drills that, that I think are hurting kids. And, you know, I'm going to keep doing them and hopefully people continue to enjoy them. And yeah, I hope they do too. Uh, and I think they will. Let me ask you a question, Jeff. In in your videos, you have this, looks like a two bladed fan that, that spins in the background. <laughs> what is that? That is a mojo. A mojo is a basically a decoy um, for dove hunting. And you put your mojo out in the field and it has these, uh, his wings rotate um, and it attracts the doves. So the doves will hopefully swoop down and the hunters can get a good shot at them. And so why is that in your video? <laughs> well, honestly, I just went through my garage. I started looking around. I was like, oh, let's add this. Let's add this. And when I added the fan, I have a fan in there sometimes. People are like, oh, I love the fan because they talk about something about the swing. It's like an oscillating fan. And then so I was like, man, I got a mojo right there. Let's put that. And I have so many friends of mine that are hunters and stuff. And the first time I put the mojo in a video, everybody went like, oh, the mojo, the mojo. You got to have the mojo in the video. So <laughs> I okay. waited for mojo to call me with an endorsement deal, but they haven't yet. All right, but that's cool because I, I I didn't know what that was, and so I'm I'm, I'm glad to to have that explanation. Now you you said when you made your first video, you got some some pushback, but you know you've gotten a lot of support, as you said. I mean, all the followers that you've got, gathered on social media. Are you still getting some pushback from these new age hitting instructors? Oh yeah, a lot of it, it but not as much as. Not as much as the support I'm getting. Um, basically, and I can't blame these guys. If I was them and somebody made fun of them, I'd probably, you know, I have more respect that they're fight, they're trying to stick stand up for themselves to not say anything. Um, but, you know, I know part of it is the fact that they feel that they're being exposed a little bit and that, you know, I'm not trying to hurt their businesses or anything like that, but I, I'm sure that's part of the deal. And, some of it can get pretty ugly. I mean, you know, now I have a new nickname. My new nickname is Judy by one of the guys uh, because he went through my stats and says that I was a Judy hitter, uh, even though the era I played in was in the era where everybody just hit home runs. There were um, hitters like myself who were, you know, situational type hitters and basically table setters. That, you know, I didn't get paid to hit home runs during my career. My job was to get on base and make things happen. And so they can look at my career numbers and see that I didn't hit for power and things. And now I'm labeled as a Judy hitter and that I was no good. And I was a bench player. So some of it can get pretty ugly, but uh, I've got pretty thick skin. Yeah. And and you also have a resume, right? A major league resume as, you know, a professional hitter for 15 years and a darn good one at that. Um, so I, I take it, then that you're not stopping, that there are more videos in the works. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm constantly thinking about what's going to be my next video because, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want my next one to, to fall short of the last one. So I'm trying to outdo the each time. And, you know, once I did the upside down one, I was like, man, it's going to be <laughs> tough to top that one. That one was a tough one to do, Jeff. I mean, I actually had my son out there and saying, I can't figure out how to turn this stupid thing. So I'm actually facing the right direction. It took us about 10 minutes to finally figure it out. And then it probably took five or six takes because I had to, and you just can't be upside down for too long. The blood's rushing in your head and I had sure. to raise up and, you know, my head, I'm getting lightheaded and then I'm trying to hit, you know, the thing, the, the whole concept of that video was that, you know, having played baseball for the better part of my life, I always learned how to, was always taught to, you know, swing down through the ball. And, and uh, it's like, I just can't make myself swing up. So maybe if I'm upside down, then I'll actually be able to, my downward swing will look like an upward swing. And that way I can emulate the launch angle swing. Right. right. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, Jeff. When I saw that one, I said, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't even, I had to stop. And I just was, I was cracking up at you hanging there upside down. And I think you had a wiffle ball bat in, in that one, um, swinging at the ball. And I, it's, it, it was just hilarious. It, it was just hilarious. Um, 
so yeah so i'm glad to know that that you still have you know some some more of these videos in the works and you know there may be some who are listening to this who haven't seen uh your videos yet they need to i mean if they can google it they, they, they'll find it if they go to any of your pages i'm sure that they can find them there as well um and they should do that because they're they're funny, they're lighthearted, but at the same time, I think you're you're doing a real service for those who believe that things like launch angle and some of these other techniques are not helping kids and they're not helping the game. So you should continue doing that for sure. Oh, I'm I plan to, Jeff. I plan to. I'm I'm work trying to work on a way I can be suspended in the air for my next video. <laughs> and that that one's kind of tough. I try to do it once and had a life jacket um, and you know like a a rope through the life jacket and about choked me out so I've, I've got to come up with a better technique so, but it's coming <laughs> okay all right we'll look forward <laughs> to that hey listen before i let you go i got a couple of questions um obviously right with the coronavirus baseball and you know a host of sports and sporting events and other events have been shut down um do you think baseball is will return in 2020 i'm not optimistic i'm just not um i wish i was um but i mean i heard some of the ideas that floated around of, um you know doing a shortened season in, in arizona and florida and um in my mind the best bet is to get control of this virus and if we have to miss the whole season, we have to miss the whole season. But, you know, the the idea that, that these players are going to play with no, no fans in the stands and players are going to be um, up in the stands six feet apart, um, t- to me, that's not baseball. That's not what, um, you know, what excited me about playing. One of the things was playing for the fans and to have no fans in the game, at the games and players – staying in hotels for the season just to try and squeeze in some semblance of a season in my mind doesn't make much sense Mm. as a player have you have you ever played in an empty stadium i don't mean because they weren't allowing fans in but because you know that particular game just didn't draw that many fans i'm sure there might have been some in the stands but it was relatively empty have you ever had anything close to an, you know, what would be what the players would be facing now, which is playing without fans. Uh, yeah, in uh, instructional league, <laughs> instructional league. Uh, when I was in instructional league in 1990, or uh, actually uh, 1989, um, you know, it was after the regular baseball season, and it was basically like practice, and we might have 10 to 15 to 20 people at a game and it was just just kind of hard just not much adrenaline um and not much excitement um and it's different i mean i played also in some minor league you know during my years in the minor leagues where we had some really really small crowds and a ball and stuff and um, that compared to playing in front of 20 to fifty thousand people there's no comparison the players get excited about that i mean i don't know if you remember hearing this but um they asked lebron james when he um, a question um, when the NBA season got suspended about playing games without fans and LeBron says, no way, I'm not playing without fans. That's the only reason we play this game. Yeah, I saw that. I, I saw that. And, you know, he later seemed to backtrack on it a little bit, but I, you know, I, I think his initial comments were the true, you know, true comments, the way he felt. Um, but what you just mentioned about, the adrenaline and playing for fans is one of the things that really has not been discussed. At least I haven't seen it. There's been a lot of talk about playing without fans. Um, In fact, just this morning, I don't know if you saw it, but Dr. Fauci said the only way sports can return in 2020 would be without fans. So there's this presumption that if we're going to see a return this year, it will be without fans. And I think that's right, because I think that, you know, the health and safety still becomes, you know, the first consideration here. But there hasn't been been a lot of talk about how that might affect players and how that might affect how they play the game. Uh, And what I hear you saying is 
you know, we shouldn't underestimate, you know, how important fans are to players giving their best out there on the field. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I just, I can just tell you coming up with the Texas Rangers, we didn't have um, very great teams when I was there. And so we didn't have, you know, big sold out stadiums. But when I went to the Boston Red Sox from the Rangers and playing in Fenway Park, and we were sold out every night. I mean, it just gives you that extra incentive to want to perform. And um, I know all these major league players have that. You know, they feel the excitement, and, and, and it runs through their bodies, and it makes them want to, you know, outperform their ability levels. And, and I mean, it's going to be tough for these guys that are used to playing in those situations to all of a sudden play a game where nobody's in the stands. So it's, uh, I mean, if it's what we have to do, we have to do it. That's fine. But uh, it may be a serious adjustment for these players. Yeah, it will. And I, and I think for us at home watching, it'll be a bit of a, an adjustment as well. But I think for the fans who are so starved for baseball, they'll welcome seeing their favorite teams on the field, even if it's in empty stadiums. But you know, here, here's the thing, Jeff. If we get to that point, it would signal a good thing, and that is that, you know, that we're coming out of this pandemic, right, or at least the severity of it, such that we now can have baseball, even if it is in an empty stadium. It would mean that things are on the way to improving, and hopefully we just continue to improve and we can get back to life as we knew it hopefully in some form yeah i mean that's i mean that's a great point that uh it would signal that maybe things are are getting back to somewhat normal um you know hopefully we can get to that point um i mean one thing i didn't consider was that if there are no fans um, in the stands to drown out the banging of trash cans (laughs) that uh yeah it's going to be hard it's going to be hard for the Astros, you know, to Ooh. signal their to signal their hitters that a fastball is coming. You know, so maybe that's one good thing about no fans. Hey, speak the truth, Jeff. You know. <laughs> no, you're right about that. You are absolutely right about that. Um, so <laughs> that's that. That's really funny. Hey, listen, man. Um, before I let you go, you you just have to do something for me. You just have to like just give me your tagline at the end of your videos, man, and just you know just give me one of them before we get on up out of here. Okay, I first have to tell you where it started. So, I, my one of my favorite announcers during my career was Hawk Harrelson of the White Sox, and he had all these really funny sayings. You know, he would say "he gone" or he would say "grab some bench" or uh, <laughs> you know that's uh. uh Sit down, bus drivers. Just some funny sayings in the game. So, one of my videos, uh, the second video I ever made, I, I I said, you know, what you're wanting me to say, and it was just kind of, just kind of came out. It wasn't like I had it planned, but now, um, I actually have a logo, and I have um, she gone hitting on Facebook, and within the next two weeks, we're going to have a she gone hitting page or a site on um, YouTube and we're going to sell hashtag she gone hitting t-shirts mm. for all the people that want to join in this movement to get our game back. So just for you, Jeff Fennell, she gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. She gone. And I got to get one of those T-shirts, man, because as Absolutely. I said, I, I'm I'm with you 100 <laughs> percent in what you're doing with, with the videos, man. And so, like I said at, at the top, congratulations, man. It's really you, you're doing, you know, I think, you know, some good work out there with the videos and you're making a good point and and you're having fun with it. So. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. We'll keep supporting you, man. And I'm looking forward to it. Let me know how I can get my She Gone <laughs> t-shirt because I will wear that proudly. I tell you that right now. You bet, buddy. I appreciate you having me on here and uh, you take care. 
you and your family be safe and uh, let's hopefully we can all get through this strange time in our lives and, and come out better for it. No doubt. No doubt. You, you, you stay well as well, Jeff. And um, I'll speak with you soon. Okay, Jeff. Take care, buddy. All right. Take care. Bye.